Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Just uh, take a couple of minutes just to let everyone in and get everyone connected to audio, and it takes a bit of time over Zoom. Great. Well, I think we'll we'll start off and we'll let um, other people kind of join as and when over the next uh, few minutes or so. Um, but thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time this morning to join us for um, NSN's second virtual spotlight. And so for those of you uh, that aren't aware or didn't attend the first of these, um, we are doing a series of virtual spotlight visits. Um, usually these would be visits to open free schools uh, that would be held in person, obviously under current circumstances, uh, not possible at the moment. Uh, so we're hosting these virtually. Uh, so just a by way of introduction, my name is Hannah Jackson. Um, I head up NSN's uh, advisory services, so the support for applicants groups. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very pleased to uh, welcome you all to the Spotlight with Marine at Academy Primary. And thank you very, very much uh, to Siobhan and staff for taking the time, uh, especially at this very busy point in term, to host this uh, spotlight. Uh, so essentially, the way today will work will be um, we'll have a presentation um, from Maureen, uh, including a, a virtual tour of the school, which we're really looking forward to um, seeing. So the uh, focus of these events really is around um, letting open free schools share their best practice, um, but particularly looking at some of the ways that they've dealt with uh, the challenges brought on by COVID over the last few months um, and looking forward to um, what September will bring, uh, particularly looking today at transition, so transition into primary school and out of primary school, so Maureen will be talking a little bit about that. Um, so Marine Academy uh, Primary is uh, a free school that opened in 2013 um, and they received their first outstanding offset uh, in 2015 uh, and now part of the TED RAG Trust um, in Plymouth. So um, just in terms of a bit of housekeeping, um, we'll be doing questions at the end, but please do feel free to use the chat um, feature to submit. Any questions kind of as we go through um, the presentation, feel free to just put anything in there and then we'll come to them um, at the end. Um, as you've already all done, I can see, um, please do keep your microphones on mute uh, for the duration of this, just so you're not getting any feedback or anything like that. Um, and we will be recording the session as well, um, so we can send it out to you at the end as well, if you want to kind of go back and relook at anything, similarly with the slides um, that we're really using. Um, and also just to let you know that we have a couple of colleagues from the Department for Education in attendance today as well. Um, so welcome uh, Ruth and Shanita and co. Um, really great to have you here again. So uh, I think without further ado, I will hand over to Siobhan um, to introduce themselves and to take you through uh, the presentation. Thanks. Okay, super. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to begin to share my screen now with you. Um, okay, so yeah, it should be up here. So with me today, I've got my deputy head teacher just here, Claire Jones, and my assistant head teacher, Georgina Brenning. So I'm the head teacher of Marine Academy Primary and have been since um, 2015, just in advance of the Ofsted inspection there. And um, we're really excited today to talk to you about sort of how things have been over the last couple of months, but also about the transition arrangements that we've had in place for our children joining us in reception and for our year six children that are moving on to secondary school. So let's start. Now, I think we've all probably got a bit fed up lately of the phrases unprecedented and also new normal. Um, so then when we were told um, about the wider reopening on the 1st of June. Um, we had an impromptu inset on that day and reopened properly to children from the 2nd of June. And one of the slides that I shared with my team was this one. And it was very much just really encouraging staff to, to put their positive pants on because it was a time that was quite scary for many people. Um, and actually, if you were outside of the education system, it was really difficult to appreciate quite how uncomfortable some people were feeling at the beginning of June. Um, and there are lots of reasons for that. And for us, I think it's the responsibility that we felt for our children about coming back to school, um, about the fact that their families were trusting us to really make it safe for them. Um, and it was also really hard to imagine just how complex a task it was to bring even just a few children back to school. Um, just all of the paperwork 
the risk assessments um, and the reassurement of staff. So we really made sure that actually we did put our positive pants on and we did move to a new normal, um, which I think we'll talk a bit about today, but also share with you that we've really liked our new normal and there are so many parts of it that we actually think that we'll, we'll keep as we move forward um, because they've worked really well and it's made us really think about our practice and just sort of operationally how we work across the school. So it is, it's been positive and we've still got a positive pants on. So why did we come back? Obviously Boris told us, didn't he, that schools needed to open wider from the 1st of June. And we did that, like I said, from the 2nd of June, when we reopened with 145 children. And we're now up to 180 children attending. And we made it happen um, after a lot of crystal balling. Like I said, when we were kind of, you're, you're judging what might happen, what the guidance might say. Um, and I think for us, we didn't bring the children back because we were told to, even though obviously we were, but um, we brought them back because we really believe that a social justice requires that we provide an education, which gives the less privileged children access to the knowledge they need to succeed. Um, and for us, and I'm sure you'll all agree, that the biggest impact we could have on our children is sitting them in front of a really, really high quality teacher. So even if we weren't going to be able to bring all of our children back, we could still bring some back and we could have that real impact on them. So in our school, we've got 30% disadvantaged um, and really, really many more on the poverty line. So we have been giving um, food vouchers to 110 of our children, um, even our children that are in our nursery, so our Me Too funded children, um, because we really felt that they did need it during this time. And so it's really crucial that all of our disadvantaged children and all of our other children, obviously, are given the relevant knowledge to succeed. And we need to be really crystal clear um, about our values. And that was really important when we reopened, when we had the wider reopening, um, is that actually we weren't opening to just provide childcare. And I know all schools could reopen and provide that edgy care for the children, but we wanted to make sure that our children that were here really were getting that high quality education and that consistent diet and we wanted to make sure that our children really were still given the opportunity to inquire the knowledge that they needed to be able to see the new possibilities and different viewpoints in the world um, and that also we were still enabling our children to know to argue to debate to join in um, and be part of the world and to to really stake their claim um, and to help make the world a better place so we did that um, on the 2nd of June and we have really made sure that the children have continued with their learning um, and in some ways I guess if we're really honest it worries us because we know that the 180 that have been attending have been getting a really good deal, have been having really focused personalised education and whilst we've been assuring home learning has been taking place and we've been sending that home every week and we've been recording um, videos for YouTube and we've been linking with our children at home actually there's nothing better than having a high quality teacher in front of the children so in some ways we might have um, widened the gap even more during this time but that'll be for us to really think about in September and to work on closing it again as well so one of the big things we needed to think about was the routines and um, and it, we really, really absolutely thrive on consistency in school um, and we don't thrive on consistency because that's what Offset were looking for or anything like that and um, we don't thrive on consistency for consistency's sake. Um, we actually focus on it because it's really, really important within our school. So moving forward and having the new normal. Um, we really need to think about that actually we needed to create that preschool um to get things right the first time because there isn't that room for movement and as a new school and you start small and you get bigger you need to get things right because you kind of can't redo that first year again and we sort of took the same view when we were thinking about this time um to really think about actually we're changing routines and like I said we actually we feel like we've changed them for the better 
and now we need to make them scalable for when more children come back. Um, but it was so important that we still ensured that we had that consistency. So we had the consistency in behaviours in our routines and um, the consistency in our children being smart when they were coming to school, our consistency in expecting manners from our children and, and also from staff and from staff to really ensure that they were delivering those high quality lessons because actually all children should be entitled to the same offer. So even though we're only having this number of children coming back, we needed to make sure that we are making a difference for them. So when we thought about our routines, we obviously had to consider all of the, the various guidance that was shared in terms of the staggered start times and managing social distancing. I'm really thinking about our groups of 15. Um, so what we did was this. We managed to put together um, these groups that you can see um, on the table. And we, we didn't want to name our bubbles or our pods after numbers or to really make them think of their current classes because in lots of cases, our children were regrouped. Um, for example, in reception in year one, the children were regrouped based on their phonics ability because we wanted to make sure that actually we were able to catch them up and to try and get past some of that lost learning something they had when they hadn't been in school between March and June. So our reception children you'll see have gone into two groups that we renamed as marine animals because we are Marine Academy Primary. Um, so pufferfish and clownfish then um, are in their streams phonics groups and they're being taught like that within their bubbles. Um, but are actually now getting two phonics lessons a day and are loving it. And you'll see some of that in the virtual tour when we show you that. Our year one children were split into three groups. And you'll see we had to move one of the year one groups into one of the year two classrooms. We've then got key worker groups from year two, year three, year four and year five. And then we've got our two year six groups as well. So a lot of the children knew they were coming back to having different teachers. But we've been really fortunate in that um, we have only actually had one teacher that has been shielding during this time. So a lot of the children have got to see their usual teacher, um, but every group has always been taught by a teacher, which has been really good for us to be able to offer. In terms of break and lunch times, this is one of the things for us that we actually don't want to change because we have loved our children eating their lunches, their hot lunches. So still the same kind of quality meals, but eating them in their classrooms. And we've just found that it's reduced a lot of um, behavioural incidents at lunchtime. It's also made lunchtimes a whole lot calmer than putting sort of 200 children into the hall to eat at one time and hyping them up. And no matter, no matter sort of how much you ask the children to be quiet and they're not, but actually it's generally because of the acoustics in the room. So we would go to the hall and think, who is making all of this noise? Um, but actually there weren't, it wasn't, it was literally the acoustics. And, but when you're in that, that environment and it's loud and it feels fussy and it feels noisy, it's not actually that calm for the children. In comparison to what we've got now, where there are um, groups of children eating in their classrooms, it feels just a whole lot calmer. Um, so they eat and then they go outside into their allocated space, which we are so fortunate that we are on a campus and that we are linked with Marine Academy Secondary because um, they've been great at letting us use their field and their tennis courts and moving forward we'll do the same thing. So our year groups, we're going to bubble them as year groups, they will be able to go out sort of onto the playground whilst another year group is on the field or another year group on the tennis courts. So that will work really well for us. But this is how it's looked since we returned on the 1st of June. Um, so we're working now on moving that about a bit um, to get it all in place and ready for September. Another thing that we needed to consider when we reopened was the classroom organisation. So we've got one, children, one child per desk um, and they look just like this. These are our year five, six children who during this time have all had their own Chromebook in lessons, which has been really, really good. 
and again something which actually our year six children we're going to make happen for them next year that they'll have their own chromebook that they'll use to um support their learning throughout the day which is just great and we've been really fortunate that the trust were able to provide some additional chromebooks to us for that which is really good so we um obviously are quite I do, well for us I guess our children have always sat in rows so the only difference here for us is, was that we pulled the tables out a bit and they were they separated a little bit more so for us moving forward then um actually when the department for education their recent guidance said that schools should make small adaptations to the classroom to support distancing where possible that should include seating people side by side and facing forwards rather than um face to face or side on that for me just made me think well that's how we always do it um and i guess if you're a more, more sort of child led bounds with um global pandemics aside that actually children sitting in rows um has been really really helpful throughout the last academic year in terms of low level disruption and suited us now so it's not really been a big change for our children but it's definitely something that we'll consider with and um, consider moving forward with but also we really liked having the individual stationery for each child um, in terms of lost learning time having those parts so simple just with the colouring pencils um, the writing pencil the ruler children have their own glue stick and scissors has just been great because it means that children aren't wandering around the room trying to find those things so absolutely no lost learning time and the teacher can be left to, to literally teach and to provide those high quality lessons, which has worked great. Um, another thing for us, um, which came from the DfE guidance, was about um, enabling, like considering with lessons or classroom activities, could they take place outdoors? So we really thought about that and actually we have managed to plan and include a whole range of outdoor learning activities since the wider reopening and the children have loved it as you can see in the photos so you've got jake um, in the middle he's doing his geography lesson you've got taya one of the year six children has the year sixes planted over the last year different vegetables which they then harvested, they chopped and they used to make soup um, over our fire pit. Our reception children have been planting which links their growing and changing topic and um, have also been going on lots of nature trails. We've got year one children in the bottom right who have done their maths learning outside um, and a great addition to the Marina Academy Friary family <laughs> since June the 1st has been our ducklings. That's um, something else which has been really fun and has just given the children an opportunity to have that um, to develop empathy, to really look after our animals, which you will see more of in the virtual tour. But it has made us reflect on actually how we've got a really beautiful outside and we don't use it enough. And we've got an outdoor learning leader who spent some of his working from home time when he wasn't on the road to be in the class. He spent that time replanning some great maths activities that can be done outside that link in with our current maths scheme that follow that progression, but gives teachers really great ideas um, for maths outside so the children are in the outdoor area, um, are doing lots of learning, are having a really great time um, and are making progress as a result, which has been really, really good. Um, it's obviously been great for social distancing being able to do this outside but actually being outside and being sort of in the great outdoors and children having that opportunity to spend that time outside when many of our children live in flats and don't have gardens it's just been second to none for them and i think that's really eased their transition back into school i think it's made it really enjoyable for them and will definitely be something that we will consider um to ensure actually is timetable then moving forward in September when more children come back, which we're really excited for. So I think for me, actually, the new normal is good. I think I've given you some examples of how our new normal will help us to move forward. Um, and I think will make us a better school for it. So, I mean, if there's a positive to come out of a global pandemic, maybe that's it, <laughs> that we found a way to um, continually improve and develop in our school. 
I think personally and professionally we're always moving on to something new and that's really really good and we should be encouraged by that and when something seems new and it seems scary we just need to remember that actually we've encountered lots of new things through our lives professionally and personally and it it, for us I guess it's become it's crazy sort of how quickly this new normal is kind of the way we do things and actually makes us think well why did we do that that way before because this way is so much better um so yeah we're really looking forward to september and being able to put lots of these things into place i now am gonna pass you over to claire who's our deputy head teacher um she's an sle for early years and phonics and we'll talk to you about the transition from reception or into reception Hi everybody, good morning. Um, right, just going to continue. Sorry about that. Okay, sorted. Okay, so transition into Marine Academy primary reception. Um, we've always been really proud of. We always put a lot of work into it. And the reason for that is because it's such an important event. It's really important to us because we need to build the relationships from the very, very beginning. Um, it's very daunting for parents, particularly dropping off their um, little children at school for the very, it could be for the very first time for some. Others have done it before, but nonetheless, it's still very daunting every time. So I've always considered our transition arrangements to be really personalised. But as Siobhan has just talked to you about, actually, the whole planning process of the new transition for this year has made me personally think actually now we've made some changes because actually this is a lot more personalized and I think it's something that we'll stick through as we move forward. So I'm just going to talk you through the old normal if you like um, and what transition looked like um, before, before a global pandemic. So we'd always start with a welcome letter to the parents, to the families to introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about us. Some of the people would have been in before because we would have held um, open evenings at open events but quite often parents it's the first communication that they'll have with us and then once they get that golden email from uh, the local authority to say they've been accepted into Marine Academy Primary we we have a letter that will arrive on their doorstep pretty much the same day to invite them in for an informal welcome evening and that is literally come bring your children you're in it's fantastic um, the, the children get a, that letter in the post we say send it in we put it on Facebook come in come and see us and they have a quick look around the classroom just to say I'm in and we say welcome we're really looking forward to, to seeing you we then hold an, in, an induction evening and our induction evening, um, oh sorry, prior to that we'll hold initial consultations. So the initial consultations for us is every single child and every single parent gets invited in for a personal one-to-one -one consultation, a bit like a parent's evening, uh, prior to them starting. And in that meeting, that for me is really important because that's where we learn about the children, um, their personalities, the things that make them unique, their likes, their dislikes, the tiny little things that parents are itching to tell us, but you can't put on a form and it's just not personal enough. And it, those meetings absolutely give the parents confidence in the teachers that we are interested in their children and we're gonna do our best to welcome them and, and transition them into the school. It's followed by an induction evening. And in that evening we give children, we have a big table and all the uniforms are lined up and the parents say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in the red team, this is mine. And they come and they collect it and off they go. And we're, we're all very smiley and it, and it feels quite personal. Um, and the uniform that they get is complimentary because that's so important to us that when the children transition into our school, that they feel part of our, um, our team, our community. So we know that every single child that starts with us starts off um, looking the part and more importantly, feeling the part. Once they've had this evening, I always say to the children, now you're gonna get an invitation in the post. It's not for your parents, it's for you. It's gonna be addressed to you and it's addressed to them. And on the back, there's a sticky label that says very important um, invitation of the name of the child. And inside we have um, a 
bit like a party invitation and they're invited to three stay and play sessions now those stay and play sessions are where they get to meet their new friends and to start those relationships with their teacher and the teaching assistant now, during that or on the last day in play as they're going out we say oh, here's a book and we give them a book that's that's made um all about the school it's got photographs in it it's got um uh pictures of their teacher and all sorts of lovely things to to help them uh, and it's got watson all over it as well to help them learn about the school and we send them on their way with a summer task and that is you'll see it down there in the bottom of the screen it's uh, a template to make some bunting to tell us all about their family and all their likes and dislikes so when they come back into school they'll give it to us and, it, and it's a good starting point but we're not in the new normal <laughs> or in the old normal we're moving so we had to think how are we going to do this how are we going to have an event where we can invite everybody in and there are all your uniforms and all come in and see us we just can't do it but we have to sit and think well what do we need our children to be when they come into school what's the important parts about being school ready strong social skills being able to cope emotionally with being separated from their parents. Some children, believe it or not, have not attended nursery, or they may have been at a childminder, a bit of a one-on-one -on -one relationship, not in, the, in a nursery environment, and for them to feel secure. So we had to make some considerations. We had to think, okay, some of these children may have been out of an earlier setting for about six months. That's huge. If you think about the proportion of their life that that is, that's huge. They may have had limited interactions with peers and that's going to have an impact on their self-confidence. Some children will have never set foot in the school and, and we're expecting them to, to come in and enjoy themselves. And some children won't have been able to, uh, to meet their teachers prior to the day. So we thought, how are we going to get around this? Because we want it to be personal and we want the children to feel secure. So this is what we did. We did the welcome letter, kept it the same. It was a nice introduction, but we did a virtual tour. So Siobhan and I, with, armed with a selfie stick, <laughs> um, did a tour of the school and um, it was fun and it was interesting. And we took the children all the way around. And then we got to the reception door where we were greeted by the two reception teachers who then took over. They introduced themselves. They showed the children around and outside, made it all exciting. And actually it was a really fun thing. And we sent that to every child that was gonna come. We posted it on Facebook, we all, but we also sent them an individual link. And we had so much feedback from that. Children were really excited because actually they could sit and look at that in the comfort of their own home as many times as they wanted, cuddled up to their parent and get that real sense of um, this is for me, this is about me and my school. They weren't huddled on a big tour with um, 60, you know, 59 other children and maybe 120 adults. So I really enjoyed that part of it. And I think that's something that moving forward we'll do in addition to having, you know, people in for an actual tour. And we really, really could not let the initial consultations go. That absolutely vital for teachers and children to have that one-to-one -one conversation again not in a herd of people so we did it via google me and and that had um that had some technical hitches at times but on the whole it was really successful and again so personal um and in terms of um the uniform evening sorry come back so in terms of the uniform evening um, we obviously can't do that. We can do it. So what we did do was we had our packs of uniform that normally look like this. So what we're going to do, so they normally look like that. They're all bundled up. We've bought some rather spectacular twine and luggage labels, and they're going to be individually um, labelled up for children. We've just we've made a little pack that's going to look like that. It's just a brown paper bag with a sticky label on it, and inside of that, there's going to be a cap for a child. There's going to be a water bottle in the team colour that they're in. Uh, the book that we normally just hand out from a pile is actually going to be in this bag addressed to them and in there you'll, they'll find out all about the school. And also, and this is really sweet, we've got 
For those of you who know our school, we have two academy um, dogs. You'll learn a bit more about them later, Watson and LB. And there's a handwritten message to that child about that child, um, and that's going to go in as well. So I think there are, there are lots of ways that we've made that more personalised. And to keep that relationship going over the summer, and this is something we've been doing as teachers anyway, is reading stories and sending the links home so that children who aren't attending can still see the teachers, hear their voices, and of course, more importantly, have stories read to them. Um, so we are over the summer sending those links out from the reception teachers to the new children so that they'll get to hear the teachers voices and just get used to them and, and get a feel and a sense that they know them. So why? Why have we done that? Why did we have to think about that? Now we're so passionate here about our children being happy and secure as I'm sure every teacher in the land is but this quote for me really summed it up. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mounting is waiting, so get on your way. If children do not have a successful start into reception, they will be on the wrong foot. They could possibly be on the wrong foot for the rest of their, um, their educational um, tour, their time with the Serene Academy Priory. We have to get it right, because for these children, this is potentially one of the biggest days in their lives that they've had so far. And that's really, really important to remember. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to hand you over to Miss Brumming. Georgie. Georgie. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so I'm going to speak to you a little bit about our year six transition into year seven. Um, so, as Mrs Meredith or Siobhan, keep on saying that now, um, mentioned to you, we are very fortunate that we've got the Marine Academy Secondary School is attached to us as well. Um, and it tends to be that about half of our children go there slightly over. Um, and then there are lots of other secondary schools around us in the area as well. So then we get quite a widespread of children going to other places. So the big question for us when we started this was how on earth are we going to prepare our children to go into year seven in these unpredictable times? Um, because as we all know, year seven's scary. When you're a child from primary school, suddenly the corridors are much bigger, older students look quite terrifying, there's all this homework that they may have not had to have dealt with in the same quantity before, and they're going to make new friends. And of course, there's this looming case of there's exams at the end of it as well. So for us, it was important that we gave some really clear, concise um, instructions and we were really comforting towards our children, but that we didn't make promises that we couldn't keep because at the start of this, obviously we didn't know exactly what was going to happen or if they would get their normal transition days um, or if they would even get to meet their new teachers before they went there. But we wanted our children to know that we still cared, albeit from a two metre distance as it was, and that we were still there to support them every single step of the way. So we started off by identifying those children and those families that we thought may need some more online sessions with us. And that was just to talk through things. And we really wanted to involve the families in that because as Claire just said, we really involve our, our families in our reception transition. And there isn't any reason that families shouldn't be so involved moving into year seven as well. And especially when children are spending so much more time at home, we needed their home influence to be just as calm on them as we would have been in school. Um, and that really helped and it gave parents that chance to share concerns that children may have shared with them at home that we wouldn't normally get to hear about or deal with them. Um, so we began by making sure that our home learning packs that were going home to children every week um, absolutely followed the same curriculum that they would have been doing so with us in school. Now in year six that is slightly easier to manage due to the fact that lots of that content is recapped from things that they will have touched base with on year five so it wasn't introducing any brand new concepts to children and that was just so that we could make sure that every single child was going into year seven with a really strong English maths and reading base. Um, so we didn't want them to feel like they were behind or that they'd missed out or that they felt that other children had been doing learning that they weren't. And it also gave us the opportunity to tell children that actually they could go into year seven holding their head high and that they could engage in academic conversation with their teachers and their peers and absolutely know what they were talking about and not feel like that they'd forgotten anything or that there were things that they needed to know that they didn't. 
We've continued to really scaffold our lessons for our children. So where in class, they would be writing some really in-depth essays by year six, um, in, especially in history and geography. They have continued to do that whilst they've been um, learning at home. And we've been able to see those really high quality essays and actually give feedback where applicable. Um, and that hasn't been like there are some families that haven't been able to do it. Um, due to their own circumstances and that is absolutely fine but for those children that have been really encouraged by being able to learn in the comfort of their own home we've definitely been able to help them keep that up. So we also chose some texts for us to share in class and with families at home that were able to share the really important messages that we wanted to get across to them. So the first of those texts was this book here called Go Big and this was written by a gentleman called Matthew Burton who is a head teacher of an academy in London and this just provided the opportunity for lots and lots of discussions about moving into secondary schools and getting lost and the myths and rumours that they may have heard about secondary school and tools for being successful and just embracing their personalities and sometimes their quirks and their differences and just being an all-round superstar which is obviously what we thrive to make our children see day in day out. So having this book to foster our conversations um, allowed us to show children that we really, really, really hope they go on to love school, but it's okay if they don't feel that way right now, because actually there might be all sorts of bonkers thoughts going on in their head, and that's not a problem. And we're all feeling a little bit on the back foot and like we don't know what's going on, but we're all here to get through this together. And whatever ideas or fears or nightmares that are bouncing around, we need to know them so that actually we can tell them it's going to be fine and even better than that, they are going to go on and excel in year seven. So we've dismantled the worries and we've started to look forward to actually the things that they can see in year seven that will be fun. So all the new friends that they're yet to make, all of the experiences that they're yet to enjoy and actually lots of great opportunities for them as well. The second text we were going to look at are You Are Awesome. Them. And this does have a similar theme to it, but the really lovely thing about this book is that it has a journal that goes alongside it as well. And what that journal does is it allows the children to just have their really own personal space to write down their thoughts because actually some of those thoughts they don't want to share and it's okay for them to just keep hold of them themselves and then they will come out in conversation later. And this book also really focuses on children's growth mindset. Now our children are familiar with that anyway because we say we, we've got the map of our mind for Marine Academy Primary and actually we look at their growth mindset on a daily basis in school so they're very aware of thinking like where we've got children that are like oh I don't have a musical bone in my body or I'm not good at maths like they know that actually through this book and through our conversations that's not true like it may be that they're not the the fastest person or they didn't get the answer the quickest or they didn't do it quite in the same way as somebody else but that doesn't take anything away from their talents or their abilities and finally a book that i'm sure lots of you are already familiar with is wonder now we have taught wonder for the last couple of years so since it was originally released um, and it's really great and it is a book that's destined to become a classic just in the way it is written and actually it draws you in and you don't want it to end and even as an adult I absolutely adore reading this book um, and it's been great for us because it allows us to share this message of kindness, it allows us to touch on anti-bullying and compassion and having empathy for others and actually acceptance of everybody as well. And the children really resonate with the fact that for Oggy, the main character, all he wants is to fit in. He doesn't want to stand out. He doesn't want to be brilliant or different or people to think he's special. He just wants to fit in. And I think that's something we can all relate to moving into a new school or as we may be familiar with a new job or a new setting, because actually on that first day, you don't want anyone to tell you that you're something different. You just want to be the same as everybody else until you found your footing. So that's been really, really great. And I would say that book, we use it as a whole class novel, but when we have all of our children in school, actually we still use that for small group guided reading um, and just an enjoyable book. So when we've got five minutes, um, drop everything and read time at the end of the day, we can just share the story and have a nice time enjoying it together. Um, and our teachers are able to entertain and inspire and have a really fun time doing that. So for our teachers moving into year seven, 
we shared our internal spring term two data, which obviously we wouldn't normally do, but with that being our most recent data, that alongside our SATS predictions was a really clear indication of the levels that children are currently at. We also provided our secondary school teachers with an example of every child's English and maths learning. So for us, we call that their personal best. Um, when and they're with us in school they would have that in a nice frame laminated in the front of their books for us to refer back to and actually that kind of gives them that time when they get to year seven to remember what they can do but also to provide the teachers a really strong basis of like there is no get out clause here this is what this child can achieve and we know that we can push them to do that um, and then when we put our bubbles together originally, we ensured that our children were in bubbles that they were transitioning into secondary school with. And that was a really lovely time for us to be able to foster some new relationships. So for some children that weren't friends previously, that wouldn't choose to play together, but we knew they were going to secondary school together, we were able to bubble them together and give them those opportunities to have that familiar face when they have their first day in September. And then we have also managed to change some of our learning styles slightly to be similar to the schools that children are attending. So some examples of this are the Sparks maths programmes that are used in many of the secondary schools our children will be going to. And again, this is something that come the new academic year, we would absolutely like to continue with because it's given our children a really sophisticated feel of doing something that's a little bit different to the rest of the school. Um, and they feel really ready to go into year seven and they feel that they're capable of tackling those challenges now when they get there. So I'd just like to leave you with this quote. And I think this is a really important quote and it will be one that lots of you recognize, but Obviously, this is a battle that was shown for oppression and terror and evil for a right to education. And we certainly need to understand why she fought so strongly for that, because she believes that one child, any child can change the world. And I know that with the education that our children receive and the, the, the education they've had the entire way through their primary school, I hope our children will be able to go on and do the same. And I know that they'll be asking themselves, did I try my hardest? Have I done my best? And did I give it everything? So I'm excited for where they'll go next. Thank you very much. I'm going to pass you back to Siobhan for the next part of your presentation. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, in the chat, I'm going to put a link to a YouTube video, which is our virtual tour. Now, I easily could have walked around my school yesterday with a selfie stick um, and talked to you about everything that's going on. But I actually thought what would be really nice is for you to see it from the point of view of some of our children. So I tasked two year five children yesterday, Daisy and Billy, um, to give you a tour of our school. Um, Daisy, you'll find is hilarious in the video, and actually repeatedly said to me yesterday, um, she kept saying to me, I'm just trying to think about what is unique in our school, because that's what I need to show people. Um, so you'll see in this video what Daisy finds is unique about us, but um, hopefully you'll get a bit of an insight into um, sort of the special place that we are, but also how we've not really changed um, just because of a global pandemic. So we, I'll put the, quote, uh, the um, link into the chat now and we are, we'll answer some of your questions then um, afterwards too. So we'll just get that for you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, ready. Here. Oh. Um, sorry, it's sending the link just to one person privately. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, everyone in the meeting. Here you go. Here's the link. Super. So if you guys watch this, it's nine minutes long, and then we'll be back to you to take questions and to sum up. Thank you.
Okay, hopefully you've all had time to watch the video in that time, but obviously the link's there for you as well if you didn't quite make it to the end. Um, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen now for the presentation. Okay, so hopefully you saw from the video that actually we are about more than reading, writing and maths. And one of the questions that's been asked in the chat is about actually how do we um, intend to close the educational gap? when our children return in September and yeah great question and so I think it links to our mission is that we will continue with this mission the mission of providing an outstanding education that ensures all pupils reach their greatest potential and live by life's highest values so initially when our children first return we'll be really focusing on those social skills and ensuring that they are um, really great people as well as really, really fantastic learners. And um, so when we consider our curriculum then, we're not, we're not kind of considering um, the sort of the Oxford Brooks model of it being a recovery curriculum. We're really thinking it of it as um, a curriculum as a way to reconnect with our children. So if anything, we'll be restarting our curriculum. We'll be thinking about um, the gaps that the children have developed that we need to fill. Um, any sort of parts of the curriculum that okay, or a bonus to teach, but could we not teach that sort of part of that lesson to, to be able to take back some time and put it into something else to, to help fill those gaps? And as Mary Myatt's written in one of her books, um, we will do fewer things, but in greater depth, because that, that will be what will really, really en enable our children to get back on track and for them um, to follow through with their learning and to really continue to make progress. And Tom Sherrington, actually, I've, I've got it printed in front of me, but he has um, released some guidance on running an effective um, consolidation of lessons. And some of his tips then are to welcome pupils back and get them back into learning as soon as you can. And for us, actually, our children haven't been hugely um, impacted by coronavirus. We haven't got, had lots of bereavements. So for us, it will be about getting our children back into the normality of school, into the, the new routine and the structure, but also making sure that we are supporting them to be great people and supporting their well-being. Um, Tom Sherrington also mentioned about you begin your lessons by celebrating what the pupils have achieved while they were learning at home. So it's going to be really important because the children have worked so hard at home for us to really be able to validate this learning um, and any work that the pupils did produce so they don't feel like it was a waste of time. But also we need to reassure the pupils who didn't engage with home learning um, or didn't complete the learning that that's okay too because there is still plenty of time to catch up. Um, we're going to use some of the COVID-19 funds from the government um, to help pay for, another, for an additional teacher next year who particularly will support in year five which for us, our current year fours, has got a real high level of SEM. So that will help with that catch up. We will continue to share knowledge organisers. So that's another tip from Tom Sherrington about sharing them with the pupils and the parents. So they know exactly what the children are supposed to know by the end of the topic and they can refer back to them to check their understanding. And during um, this period of time, Georgie's also our science lead. So she's worked on ones for um, the science topics as well. So we've got them for humanities and the, the science. And also the final tip from Tom Sherrington was about being confident and optimistic um, when setting this all out. And even sometimes like if we don't feel that ourselves, we're not always um, glass half full, um, but we need to be optimistic um, because actually our pupils and our staff need to feel that what we're doing is achievable. And um, as heads that we really need to, to believe in that as well. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to really develop a reconnect curriculum that we're going to work on over the next few weeks that will not be vastly different to what we would have been doing anyway. So, yeah, and keeping our positive pants on. <laughs> and so that's the end of our presentation. I think there was another question on the chat. So I'll stop sharing now and have a little look at the chat as well. Um, yeah, so there was another question about how do we cover or manage the cost of funding every reception child with a free uniform? And actually for us, we just believe it's so important for our children to feel that they're a part of our family and that we do commit some people premium funding to it every year. But we do make sure it's one of those things that is just costed out on our budget. Um, 
at the start of every academic year so that the costs are absolutely covered. So it does mean that we might take that funding out of somewhere else, out of one of the other resource pots, but actually that is what, for us, it's so important to get everybody started, um, looking the same, feeling the same, in their uniform and ready to go. Okay, I love the next question that's just popped up. Um, where did we get our book vending machine from? Oh, thank you. We love it. Um, so yeah, book vending machine. We bought it as a vending machine from somewhere in Birmingham. Um, I bid on it on eBay. I won it for £70 um, and then had to realise actually how do I get a vending machine? From Birmingham to Plymouth but there are some really really great couriers and um, so we paid a courier who um, put it onto a pallet and actually that only then cost us £60 and they transported it to Plymouth for us and then we got a design company who does some of our branding to make it look all fancy and um, but yeah really simple it was pretty much working there was um, some of the electrics in the vending machine weren't brilliant when we first got it but we've got a really great caretaker who sorted that out for us but the children love it as you saw in the video so yeah <laughs> thank you okay so, oh um how easy has it been to communicate with parents and guardian guidance okay so it's been i think we over the last year have really really developed with our parents um, the use of an app called Expressions, which we use through Group Call, and that links in with our Sims. And we will contact parents an awful lot on Expressions, and we are our admin team painstakingly contacted parents individually over the last year to make sure that they had downloaded the app and that they were checking it. And we'd made the move to go paperless. So when this all started coming about in March, it actually became a really easy way to communicate with the parents. So we were able to send them out regular letters um, or short texts. Um, we also use social media a lot. Uh, the Marine Academy Primary Facebook page, if you have a chance to take a look, do. We post a lot of things on there. And that's the way that our families do feel quite connected to the school as well, even when they're not here. Brilliant. Well, we have um, yeah. come to 11 now, but thank you so much. I found that really, really interesting and I hope um, everyone else did too. And yeah, we will definitely be sending out the, the link um, with the follow up and the recording and everything. So if anyone uh, does want to watch that um, video again, then please do. I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, so we'll be in touch um, soon with some follow up just uh, to send a link to the recording um, for anyone that, that does want to watch. But once again, thank you so much, um, Siobhan and, and colleagues. Um, really appreciate you taking the time. Super. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the end of term.